We're here with uh, Darlene Cavalier. She is the founder of Science Cheerleader. Dot com. Okay. <laughs> so tell me about your approach. It's a little bit different. You're, it, you, you talked a lot about science literacy. And you really, what science writers and science bloggers do is, try to do is educate. Mm -hmm. You're taking that a step further in that you're going directly from the scientists to the citizens. You're taking out that, that middle step that traditional media used to be. How did you come up with that concept and what's your goal? So uh, I'll start from the last question first. So Science Cheerleader has three goals and it's to increase um, adult science literacy and really um, get more people interested in science, mm -hmm. um, especially the hard to reach crowd. Mm -hmm. And then um, kind of raise the ranks of citizen scientists. Mm -hmm. So these are volunteers who help researchers accomplish specific tasks. Um, and by and large, they don't have science degrees. So mm -hmm. um, the natural progression would be, you know, in an ideal world, somebody comes to the site because something about the site was appealing to them. Um, and then they learn about these projects that they can get involved in and they actually get involved in those projects. And then um, ideally, I want to try to harness the power of that group and get them more involved in um, federal and state and local science policy conversations. Mm -hmm. So those are the three goals. Mm -hmm. And how did you come up with that concept? Because um, well, it's kind of a new concept. It, it started it. backwards. Again, I'll, I'll start from point number three, which got me to point number one, which was I initially set out to um, help reopen a um, Congressional Office of Technology Assessment. Mm. Um, and I just did that because I was a you know crazy graduate student who learned about the rise and the fall of this terrific office. Um, learned that it wasn't actually you know, completely shut down, it was just defunded, and that it might serve a really big purpose um, in terms of helping scientists communicate mm -hmm. better with um, people in Congress. And that's what that agency mm -hmm. was set up to do. So I looked at other nations who were um, having their own OTAs, mm -hmm. Office of Technology Assessment, um, but because they modeled theirs off of ours, they also had the benefit of adding um, more important things like uh, social impact studies and involving more members of the public. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, one of the one of the things they do is basically bring the public into these conversations mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. any kind of legislative um, materials are set. So, before any policies are set. Um, so, I started trying to do that first, and there's a lot of support for it. Um, and there's this, you know, crazy person with, you know, I'm tethered to nothing. Um, and then in closed door meetings, um, probably too often I would hear either from people in Congress or scientists themselves that they just didn't have faith in the American public to be able to weigh in on mm -hmm. important conversations. And um, it didn't feel right. You know, if the issue was science literacy, then, you know, let's, let's figure out a way to tackle that. Um, I started digging a little bit more and learned that what's well, adult science literacy is a problem for sure. Um, but it's not as hopeless as in these other countries that were making these you know, mm -hmm. mechanisms work and work really well. Um, so what I tried to do is say look, the people that are most likely to get involved in policy issues um, are from the general public are people that are you know already involved in mm -hmm. some issue or it's a passion of theirs or something. Mm -hmm. So that, that led me to the path of these citizen scientists. That's how I really mm -hmm. um, learned about this group and they're just amazing. You know, they're all over the place. They just do it to advance science mm -hmm. or because it's an interest of theirs, they're not getting paid. Um, and they're really contributing to real science. So I knew that scientists respected that group. Mm -hmm. By and large, they respect them. Um, Can you give me a few examples of what kind of people are in that group? Sure, sure. So there are um, half a million people volunteer to monitor the uh, quality of our nation's rivers, streams, mm -hmm. and lakes. That's very useful data mm -hmm. to um, scientists. There are people who tag monarch butterflies to help mm -hmm. you know, researchers at Kansas State University. Mm -hmm. um, they go on and on. Uh, and in fact, there were so many that as I tried to catalog these on Science Cheer Litter, it was just way too many and it was um, it outgrew the blog. So uh, Science Cheer Litter has a sister site that it's its, its own business and it's just uh, doing really well and that's called scienceforcitizens.net. Mm -hmm. So that's where people go to learn about these projects mm -hmm. and then uh, we just create the on-ramp for them to get involved in them. Um, so, you know, 
set up this this infrastructure for people to get involved in these projects so I can go back and say, hey, look, you know, right. look how many people are, are we could tap into to be involved in mm -hmm. these conversations and if the best way to learn is by doing, you know, let's, let's, let's make an assumption that they're, they're science literate, you know, right. they have the ability to learn and be involved in these conversations. Um, and then in the process, to me, you know, I, I have union members as brothers and sisters. And they're some of the smartest people I know. Um, they weren't afforded the opportunity to go to college. Mm -hmm. And I value what they say. And I thought, there's got to be a way to like change up the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Because even from what I was hearing, the fear of getting the public involved mm -hmm. in things, um, that's how the science cheerleader mm -hmm. and bringing in the professional cheerleaders kind of came into play. Um, I had already had an in since I was a 76ers cheerleader a long time ago. So I decided to blow my cover. Because really, not a lot of people knew about that. With, you know, I didn't want people to know about it. I didn't know right. how they were going to feel. Um, and then just started interviewing all these NBA and NFL cheerleaders who are also scientists and engineers to you know, challenge stereotypes. Mm -hmm. But in the process, they they were just phenomenal. Um, the reactions that I received from teachers, parents, mm -hmm. girls, um, which is not what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems to give a lot of purpose to that um, activity. I'm really happy that it has. Do you see a limit to what you're doing? No. Are, there, are there limits? You mean in terms of how much the public should be involved or what they're doing? How or? much you can do to get every last person in, uh, you know, to, to go beyond even the ones who might be just mildly interested in it. Um, how far can you reach? You know, I keep trying to stretch that envelope, you know, it's easy to get the attention of the citizen scientists and turn them on to even other areas of mm -hmm. science. And they're my favorite group to work with. Um, through the cheerleaders, you know, it's surprisingly becoming easier to reach another group mm -hmm. that's been difficult to reach, and those are young women who maybe are also cheerleaders. There's, you know, they can't be discounted. There's, um, the estimates are between three and four million of them. Um, so, like I said, I didn't set out to reach mm -hmm. them, but so I start trying different things, um, you know, kind of uh, just showing up at the corner bar and playing the science of NFL football thing and having two of the science cheerleaders there plus the scientists mm -hmm. and the bar patrons weren't expecting that and um, just testing things out mm -hmm. to see what the reaction mm -hmm. is. And if it fails, it fails and we modify it and try right. something else. Um, I don't really think there's a limit. There's a limit to what I can do because I'm just one Time person. Wise, right. And this is just, you know, a fun thing for me to right. do. Um, but I have, you know, a day job and I have four kids and a lot of other stuff going on. Um, but I would hope that other people, you know, embrace their own style mm -hmm. um, and their own purpose, mm -hmm. which was kind of the, the point of that um, sure. session was to get people just thinking about, okay, what is my purpose? And if mm -hmm. I want to expand beyond reaching other, you know, science communicators, mm -hmm. um, how might I do that? Mm -hmm. and so just creating, you know, ways for them to think, be a little more daring and sure. bold um, and seeing what works. Okay. Yeah. Thanks.